Hi, Anthony. This Hi. is Tony. How are you? I'm doing good. How are, how are you this afternoon? I'm good. Are you on a speaker or something? I'm seeing an. I'm hearing an echo of my own voice. Um, no, I'm not on a speaker. It, it could be that they're recording the conversation. Oh, I see. The, the National Security Administration, the FBI, and all these federal agencies, it's like uh, they, they're, they're recording every American conversation, particularly those of scientists. I see. Okay, so, uh, so are you ready to talk about the files that you obtained from Monsanto regarding safety analysis of, I believe, glyphosate? And what you, uh, what your opinion is about about that? Uh, yeah, I can I can discuss it. I can't send you the documents. I can't give them to uh, to anyone because I signed an agreement with the Environmental Protection Agency. But I can uh, I can talk about them, and I can give you my opinion of those documents because I've read them all. Good. First of all, how old are those documents? Okay, um, there, uh, I have about uh, a dozen or so uh, of these uh, trade secret documents that belong to Monsanto that were submitted to the U.S. EPA for the registration of glyphosate back in uh, the late uh, 1970s, early 1980s uh, and, uh, and beyond. I have some later studies as well. But um, the original documents, um, uh, these are all animal studies. They did animal studies in mice. They did animal studies in rats, rabbits, and dogs. And they did not only short-term studies, but they also did long-term studies. Now, uh, now many of the activists say that uh, you know there aren't any long-term studies that Monsanto did. Well, that's not true. Monsanto did a number of long-term studies on glyphosate uh, to um, uh, investigate the safety of the chemical. Um, however, when they finished um, all of these studies and submitted them to the Environmental Protection Agency for review, uh, in, in order to get glyphosate registered for use uh, in agriculture, they... Um, uh, uh, after which they asked the Environmental Protection Agency to seal the documents as trade secrets so that no one could revisit the data again. I see. I see. Um, so um, there are a couple of, uh, well, there are several studies that, uh, that jump out at me just off the top of my head. Um, one was a study that was done uh, with rabbits. And they were looking to see if uh, glyphosate had an effect on um, uh, on the skin, uh, and if it caused uh, any any damage. It's a, it's a typical test that they do with chemicals. Uh, so uh, you know they they had a number of rabbits. They shaved them. They applied gly uh, various concentration of uh, glyphosate to the skin. And then they monitored uh, the blood chemistry and whatnot. And interesting is that they dismissed uh, uh, one of the findings uh, that they uh, found in the blood, and that was the incidence of uh, uh, the increase of lactate dehydrogenase, which is an enzyme that uh, happens in the blood um, uh, when you get tissue damage. Now... Uh, We'll hold that thought about lactate dehydrogenase for a few minutes. I'll get back to that. Um, uh, Monsanto claims that glyphosate doesn't affect humans or animals because we don't have the shikimate pathway. Um, and plants do, we don't. So uh, as a result, uh, glyphosate is not toxic to us. Well, that is a lie. It is false. Um, our bacteria, which comprise 70% of our, our immune system and outnumber our cells more than 10 to 1, um, we have a, like 100 trillion bacteria, and, and those bacteria do have the shikimate pathway. And when we disrupt the bacteria, uh, we disrupt our immune system. When we disrupt our immune system, uh, then other things in our body are affected, like our enzymes and our CYP450 enzymes 
are, are affected and many other enzymes as well. Um, that study on rabbits uh, uh, piqued my interest because they dismissed uh, the effect that glyphosate had being absorbed through the skin in, into the animal and uh, the production of lactate uh, dehydrogenase, which showed actually that, that there was some, uh, uh, something going on. There, were, there, there was tissue damage um, happening. Um, now, another study they did, they radio, they radio labeled glyphosate uh, with a radionuclide and they injected it into the animals, and they followed the radionuclides into the various organs, circulating from the bloodstream to the various organs. And what they found was that, um, uh, that glyphosate goes to the bone marrow almost immediately. It goes right into your bones and right into the marrow. Now that's not a good thing because that's where your new cells are born. Hmm. And uh, those cells go from your bone marrow, uh, they wind up going to the thymus gland and to your tonsils, mainly to the thymus gland where uh, those uh, cells mature. Those are our, our T cells, our helper cells uh, for, the, uh, um, for our white blood cells to fight off infection, to fight off cancer and whatnot. So uh, they found that glyphosate goes uh, to the bone marrow. Now, we'll get back to that because that's very significant. Um, another study uh, done, it was a long-term study in mice and a long-term study in rats. Now, those were very, very significant studies. Uh, they lasted 26 months, two years and two months. And in, uh, in the study with rats, uh, in particular, they used, uh, they used a control where the control did not receive glyphosate. They used a low dose, a mid dose, and a higher dose. Uh, the three doses that they selected weren't like the rabbit study where they used uh, like 1,000 uh, uh, milligrams per kilogram to 5,000 milligrams per kilogram. They used a different dose. They used lower doses. They used three uh, parts per million, uh, 10 parts per million, and 30 parts per million, or 3, 10, and 30 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of the animal. Now, what they found was um, uh, there, there were statistically significant uh, 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 findings um, that occurred, but because they didn't see a linear dose-response relationship they dismissed the findings as not compound related. In other words, what they expected to see, as with many chemicals, is that the higher the dose, uh, the more uh, uh, effect it has. The, the, the lower dose, the least amount of effect, the higher dose, the most effect. But that's not true with glyphosate because, as Monsanto knows, glyphosate has an inverse dose response relationship. And uh, that was clearly shown in the Mo Monsanto trade secret studies. Now, in that rat study, um, uh, they, they found, um, they examined all the, uh, the major glands and all the organs. And um, the highest incidence of uh, uh, effects of hyperplasias, uh, which is abnormal growth of tissue uh, or tumorigenic growth, which would include adenomas and carcinomas. The highest effects were found in the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, and the thymus gland. Then the major organs, they, they found that the mammary glands were affected of the females and the testicles of the male rats uh, had uh, incidents of tumorigenic growth. And then that was followed by the kidneys. Uh, they found that glyphosate induced uh, uh, chronic kidney disease back then. It also affected the, um, uh, the pancreas, the liver, and the lungs. Now, um, if, we, if, we, if we look at um, uh, that study, the, it was done by Biodynamics in New Jersey. 
1978 to 1980. The study was submitted to the EPA in 1981, and that's the 26-month glyphosate rat feeding study. Um, it's interesting that the uh, amount of uh, uh, the of interstitial cell tumors of the testes of the male rats was very significant. They didn't find any incidence in the control. But in all three groups, the three milligrams, the 10, and the 30 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, they found incidence of, uh, uh, of hyperplasias, of uh, adenomas and carcinomas. As a matter of fact, the low dose group um, of all an of all animals of the uh, of male animals, uh, they found uh, six percent. Um, let's see, uh, no, uh, of all the male animals in the study, they found in the uh, low dose group they found uh, seven point six nine percent. In the mid dose group, they found a little bit less. They found six point two five percent. And in the uh, uh, 30 part per million group, they found 15.38% um, incidence of uh, tumors of the male testes. Now, they didn't find any tumors in the control group. Now, let's, uh, we'll move on to uh, uh, another finding in that study that, uh, that really interested me. Um, in the kidneys, uh, we know that uh, the Sri Lanka study and also the study that was done in uh, Nicaragua um, uh, kind of implicates glyphosate uh, in sugarcane workers and also uh, as uh, working synergistically with arsenic um, in Sri Lanka to cause chronic kidney disease. Well, back in 1981, um, in that biodynamic study, there was uh, an incidence of uh, kidney focal tubular dilatation and nephrosis in the rats. What they found was that in the control group, um, there were two out of 10 animals that, uh, or 20% of, uh, of uh, those that they looked at um, had um, uh, tubular uh, dilatation or uh, nephrosis. And in the low dose group, they found 30%. In other words, three parts per million induced 30%, which was 50% more than the control group. In the mid dose group, they found 22%. They found less. But then in the high dose group, they found 70%. And if you look at uh, uh, both kidneys, uh, uh, incidents in bilateral or two kidneys and unilateral and or one, they, uh, when you look at the study as a whole, they found that glyphosate induced um, chronic kidney disease in 80%. That's pretty significant. Now, what, what they did was they brought in historical controls that were totally unrelated to the, to the, to the study. And, uh, and they did this repeatedly throughout the, the, uh, all of the findings. They brought in historical controls that were unrelated, that had uh, uh, controls where they, they found um, incidence of tumors in the kidneys. Uh, and they used those contaminated studies to cancel out the results that they found testing glyphosate. And they did the same thing with the, with the uh, testicles of male rats. Even though their own control had zero incidence, they brought in contaminated studies, unrelated studies, that uh, uh, showed um, incidence of uh, 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 testicular tumors in the rats, and they used those to cancel out the glyphosate study. Now, I'll continue on. Um, they also found, in 1981, they found uh, an incidence of pancreatic islet cell tumors of the pancreas in the male sprig 
Valley Rats. Uh, in the uh, in the control group that did not receive any glyphosate, there was zero incidence of adenomas and carcinomas. However, in the low dose group of three parts per million, they found 10% incidence of of uh, adenomas and carcinomas. In the mid-dose group, 10 parts per million, they found 4% incidence. And then in the, uh, the 30 part per million group, they found 6% incidence of adenomas and carcinomas of the pancreas. Then they brought in a number of studies, historical studies, to compare these numbers with to arrive at zero to say that glyphosate had no effect on the pancreas. They didn't know uh, what caused uh, the numbers that they saw, and they dismissed it as a mystery. Then we progress on to, um, there was another study done in 1990. It was done uh, 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 also, um, it was done by Stout and Rooker. It was a 24 month feeding study. And they, they revisited uh, the pancreas again to see if glyphosate-induced uh, pan, uh, pancreatic tumors. But the doses that they used were 2,000 parts per million, 8,000 parts per million, and 20,000 parts per million. Because they had learned earlier that, uh, uh, that these lower dose levels uh, might, might not... Uh, be a good thing uh, because it would show that there uh, that glyphosate uh, probably was causing these uh, adenomas and carcinomas. So they chose a higher dose rate. But to, to their surprise, they also got incidences of adenomas and carcinomas of the of the pancreas. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, a table that I made for a paper that I'm writing and. In the, uh, in, in the control of that study that received no glyphosate, um, they saw 5% incidence of adenomas and carcinomas. In the low-dose group of, of 2,000 parts per million, they saw 18%. That was over three times more adenomas and carcinomas. In the mid-dose group of 8 thousand parts per million, they saw 10%, which was double what their control was. And then in the 20,000 part per million uh, category, uh, they saw 15%. And that was three times their controls. So in every incidence, they saw that, that the glyphosate treated animals um, had higher incidence uh, of adenomas and carcinomas. Now, um, when we look at the uh, Monsanto data for the thyroid, and we know the importance of the thyroid and producing thyroid hormone, uh, like the other glands, they produce uh, uh, hormones that uh, regulate our body functions in our immune system. In the thyroid, they, all, they found C cell tumors in the female rats. Um, they had a, a fairly low incidence of about 4% in the controls, but uh, then when uh, they went to the, the mid-dose and the high-dose group, they found 12% and 11%. It was like three times higher rates of thyroid cell tumors in those animals. So what did they do? They brought in multiple studies, uh, historical control studies, that had incidences of, uh, of tumors in the controls, and they used that to wipe out the data and uh, say that it wasn't the glyphosate. <laughs>